Welcome to Faith with Love Fellowship in our midweek service. We call it the Hour of Power. We really try to stay within that hour. And mm -hmm. uh, unlike on Sunday mornings when I usually preach on topics, I believe the Spirit of God wants us to talk about and, uh, and to bring to uh, you and to the congregation. On uh, Wednesday nights, we do line upon line studies of the of the, the Word of God, and we are in the Book of Romans now, and uh, uh, we are going to continue actually in Chapter Three of uh, Romans. So uh, before we jump right in, let's pray together into uh, into this time of study and um, and encouragement. And, uh, and bless him. Amen. Father, we love you. We thank you for this opportunity to be together. We trust you by your great and wonderful, mighty Holy Spirit to bring the word of God to life to us, O oh Lord, that we might have eyes to see what the Spirit of God desires to show us and ears to hear what the Holy Spirit wants us to hear. Lord, we prepare our hearts. We will be not only hearers, but faithful doers of your word, thereby honoring you and blessing you and uh lord and then becoming uh um, recipients of all that you have uh for us thank you that you are perfecting us you are uh, helping us so that we might live as witnesses for you that we might live uh in this world and and share jesus with the people that we come across the path we honor you, we praise you, we bless you in Jesus' name, amen. 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 So we're in Romans chapter 3, and uh, last week uh, we talked a little bit, chapter 2, if you remember, if you were with us, it talks a lot about circumcision and uh, about uncircumcision. And I just want to clarify so that you understand, God instituted circumcision of the flesh in a separating Jews, believers in the Lord, from those who didn't believe. But it never was intent, his intention that it would only be an outward circumcision. It was supposed to be an, a circumcision of the heart. In other words, it was supposed to be a, if you will, or a separating unto the Lord. Amen. It's not just separating, it's separating unto the Lord. And so, um, here, we uh, will pick up actually in verse 28, chapter 2, verse 28. Uh, it says, I'm reading from the New King James tonight. Uh, it says, for he or she is not a Jew who is one outwardly, nor is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh. But he or she is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit, not in the letter, whose praise is not from men, but from God. And so it's a separating um, uh, unto God. Hallelujah. It's a, it's a separating of, of the heart. It's a separating of the spirit that we use and that we are for his purpose. And, and he is foremost. And, he, and, um, and that is what God considers is a true Jew. And so, uh, uh, but in a manner of speaking, a, a true believer. Hallelujah. And, and so in chapter 3, verse 1, it says, what advantage then has the Jew? Or what is the profit of circumcision? And it says, verse 2, much in every way, chiefly because to them were committed the oracles of God. For what if some did not believe? Will their unbelief make without effect? Certainly not. Amen. So to we, I do include myself, but I'm grateful. Uh, to we who have been uh, set apart, so to speak, and, and that setting apart is God's will, but God wills everybody be set apart. Hallelujah. But, for, but there's a responding to it that we have to respond to that calling and, and do the separating of ourselves unto God. Hallelujah. And God wills everybody would do it and live that way. But um, 
for we have made that decision, hallelujah. Uh, he says that um, that uh, that to us has been committed the oracles of God, which is the word of God, and the ability to understand the word of God, and the ability to walk in the light of it, and, and to be able to share it with other people as well, amen? Uh, and so uh, it says here, what about unbelievers? What about people who don't believe? It says, for what if some do not believe? Will their unbelief make the faithfulness of God without effect? And the answer is certainly not. Indeed, let God be true, that every man a liar, as it is written, that you may be justified in your words and may overcome when you are judged. Hallelujah. And uh, verse 5, But if our unrighteousness demonstrates the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unjust who inflicts wrath? Certainly not. For then how will God judge the world? For if the truth of God has increased through my lie to his glory, why am I still judged as a sinner? Righteous judge. And let all men be liars, meaning that if it's not from God, if it's not according to God's plan, if it's not according to his agenda, if it's not uh, from his heart, then it's an abomination before him. It's a lie. And and we know the Bible tells us that it's the devil who's a father of lies. And there's no truth in him because he's a liar and the father of lies. And so lies find their, their origin in hell. And uh, but but truth finds its origin in God, and it's a very it's a very clean line, amen. It's no gray area. There's no there's no uh, open to negotiation. Uh, it, it's either the truth or it's a lie. Uh, and, and the Lord shows this to us very clearly. He says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So lies come to steal, to kill, to destroy steal uh, understanding, to steal righteousness, to steal uh, the fear of God, to steal uh, the, the fact that God is right. Amen. When it becomes open to negotiation is when we are falling to that same trap that that Satan or Lucifer at the time set for Adam and Eve, have God really said. And, and the correct answer, if it had been bold enough, would have been, yes, God said. And there's no, there's no room for negotiation, and there's, this is not open to, for, to discussion. And, uh, uh, you know, close your mouth and keep it closed, uh, Lucifer. And, but he, he, uh, that's not what they did. They entertained uh, his, his thoughts. They began to think about those thoughts, and, and they believed the lie. They literally swallowed it hook, line, and sinker, and it cost them everything. But, uh, and, uh, and by doing that, they brought that upon all of us as well. Uh, but by the, by the grace of God and by the love of God, the Lord Jesus came to the earth and born of a virgin and lived a sinless life. And he came and he purchased by his blood back all that we had lost in the garden. And he gave it back to us. He said, authority is given to me as we turn to me go ye therefore and, and gave us all the authority so we can question sometimes is how much authority have we been given and the word of God says all of it amen the devil has no more authority has no right over your life has no right over you and his power his influence has been broken off of your life but you've got to walk in it amen you've got to believe that you have to uh, circ allow yourself to be circumcised in your heart, separated unto God, and, and give no place to the devil. So, uh, here he goes on. He's Why not say, let us do evil that good may come, as we are slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say their condemnation is just. What then? Are we better than they? Not at all. For we have previously charged both Jews and Greeks that they are all under sin. Verse 10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none that seeks after God. They have all turned aside. 
They have become, they have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good, no, not one. Their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues they have practiced deceit. The poison of asp snakes is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now, I know it's going to sound like, wow, Pastor Nick, did you like preach that because of, you know, what's going on? Well, no, God's my witness. This is where we're up to. We, we, we follow line on line. And uh, we just came out of the, the, uh, the book of John. I told you we we did Luke, and then instead of doing John, we went right to the book of Acts, because the book of Acts begins with the former treatise uh, I have presented to you, so it's the book of Luke continued, so we did the book of Acts, and then we went back and did John, and since we were in Acts, our next step was Romans, and it's amazing how God knows and wants us to understand, hallelujah, uh, that God is a righteous judge, and uh, if people don't believe him, uh, that doesn't change anything, amen? He is still righteous, and he is still... It says, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They have become together unprofitable. There is none that does good, no, not one. Tomb. With their tongues they have practiced deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and peace and the way of peace they have not known. Here's, here's the reason. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Hallelujah. And so God is the condition of men. But that's the good news, my brother and sisters. God's not desiring to judge mankind. God is desiring to save mankind. Hallelujah. He, he is the faithful judge, and there will come a time where he will judge the living and the dead. We are told in the word of God, but we are under what's called a dispensation. This is a time frame of the grace of God. Hallelujah. And this is a time where God, rather than bring judgment upon the earth, he has decided to bring mercy and grace. And so rather than judge men and women for their actions, God is saying, come and be forgiven because of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is a time to receive that mercy and turn to God, amen? And turn from wickedness and turn from, from idolatry and turn from, from all of these things that are mentioned here. And the Bible says that the beginning of wisdom, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So the first step is to realize that God is One day we'll stand before him. There is no way out of it. And we will give account for our lives. Amen. And uh, and so for we who have chosen to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, taken away the handwriting that was against us, our, our own sin and wickedness. He has taken it away by his blood. So we receive humbly and, and um and, and very thankfully, his blood, and it cleanses us of all unrighteousness, that the word says. But those who refuse, those who will not uh, bow or will not acknowledge him or, or allow him to be what he wants to be in their lives, then they will stand before him and they will give account for their lives. And the reason whatever they may feel is justified, but the reason why they re they refuse refuse to receive the gift of salvation uh, in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And again, it's not open to, uh, to um, conversation. It's not open to debate. Uh, there is one righteous judge and, and he is righteous throughout. Uh, and he is, and he is uh, right in all the judgments. Amen.
And so uh, notice what it says, verse 19. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Amen? Every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. For by the law is the king is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ, to all and on all who believe. For there is no difference. Hallelujah. See, every mouth will be stopped and everyone stands guilty before God. So it's not open to discussion. That's the condition of mankind. But God in his mercy and his kindness sent his son. And it says here, as we mentioned, it says here, but now, verse 21, the righteousness of God apart from law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. The law just tells us that we are guilty, that we are held bound, and there is no alternative, there is no hope, there is the end of conversation, and every human on the planet is deserving of it. Hallelujah. But, why do I say hallelujah at that? That doesn't sound like hallelujah. Because I know what's coming next. Amen. The hallelujah is says here. It says though even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ. There is hope. His name is Jesus. There is righteousness available. His name is Jesus. Amen. There is for everyone. That's hope. That's good news my brothers and sisters. It says here, even the righteousness of God, verse 20 through, to, through faith in Jesus Christ, to all and on all, meaning it's available to everyone. That's wonderful news. Hallelujah. And then it says, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation, as a substitution, amen. Um, it's a manner of speaking. Uh, it's, a, it's a purchase. It's going to a store and saying, I want uh, five pounds of peaches and uh, the price of five pounds of peach. The propitiation is something has to be given in exchange for what you're going to receive. And we have been uh, blessed beyond measure with the Lord Jesus willing to pay the price to set up us free to purchase us from hell amen and, and to and to and to honor us uh by by bringing us back into right relationship with our heavenly father amen so uh it goes on and it says here uh whom god set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance, God had passed over the sins that were previously committed. Hallelujah. See, God didn't turn the other way. God, God didn't act as though the sins don't exist. They existed. And they called for judgment. They called for death penalty. And the only way that you can be spoken to be righteous is by, leave, by believing in that what the Lord Jesus did, that in fact he allowed himself to become sin and paid with every drop of his blood, he paid so that you and I can be free. Amen? And I've told you before, this is good news and it's for every single person on the planet, past, present, and future. 
but it's only activated by faith. It's only it only becomes your possession when you when you when you come humbly before God and say, Jesus, I believe that you are the savior of the world. And I ask you humbly but with 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 great you know anticipation, so to speak, forgive me. Be my savior. I I I, I separate myself to you. I separate myself from 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 words that that are dishonoring, of actions that are dishonoring, of thoughts that are dishonoring, activities that are dishonoring. I separate myself unto you, and I will live for you. Mm -hmm. And and people around me will notice a difference. Amen. That's the way it's supposed to be. Set apart to the master's use. Set apart. Hallelujah. And that setting apart. Is that we do and why do we do it we do it because of faith we do it because we believe mm -hmm. hallelujah so then he goes on he says here um whom god verse 25 set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance god had passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. It is such a powerful gift. Hallelujah. You can't earn it. We don't deserve it. It's a gift. Hallelujah. Without any strings attached. It's a gift. Glory to God. To demonstrate at the present time, verse 26, his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? No, but by the law of faith. The law can do nothing but tell you you're guilty. It doesn't have the ability to forgive you or to cleanse you. Only by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. All the law will do is say you are guilty. You are a trespasser. Amen. You have a debt. And and and, and the you know I heard somebody say years ago that he paid a debt that he didn't owe because we he had a debt we couldn't pay. You with me? But by his kindness and his grace, he willingly paid that debt, even though it cost him his very life. Amen. But because he was pure, because he was clean, because he was truth personified, the grave couldn't hold him. Hell couldn't keep him. Amen. And after three days, he resurrected just like he said he would. And by resurrecting, he offers hope to all who will believe. Amen. That we too will resurrect. And it will not be in, in, a, in a way the world thinks about, you know, some kind of reincarnation. No, no, no. Exactly as you are, you will resurrect and you will be recognized and it will be you and you'll be alive forevermore if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you refuse, and I'm hoping that's nobody that's listening to me today, because if we refuse, hell is, is awaiting those who refuse. And the Bible says hell is not created for human beings. It was not. And God wills no man go to hell. Hell was created for Lucifer and the fallen, and the fallen angels. And uh, because they will not, they will not repent. They have, they have made up their minds. So a place of, of abandonment and a place of exile was created for them because that's what they wanted. They didn't want to be in the presence of God. They didn't want to, to honor God and acknowledge that he alone is, is God. And uh, they, they were, and Lucifer was, was uh, successful in deceiving a third of the angels and they fell with him. Two thirds remain loyal to God, Amen. But it's a, so a place of separation was made, and the only being will go to hell is by choosing, not because God wills it. God wills they be saved. God wills they repent. We all. The only way a human being goes to hell is because they choose to, because they will not receive the gift 
of salvation. And, and some people, I hear you sometimes, some people say, and I hear it in my spirit, some people will say, well, that's not fair because not everybody has heard. No, my brothers and sisters, God is making sure that everybody hears. You know, there is no place, especially in the day and age we live, that the internet cannot reach and shortwave radio, and the gospel is preached, and there's all kinds of ways we have no idea how we are presented with the truth. Sometimes, you know, we, we go through TV channels, and uh, there are so many TV channels that, that, are, uh, that, are, are, that are Christian, that are sharing the gospel. There are so many radio stations that are sharing the gospel, both regular AM, FM, shortwave. There's so many, the signals are going out there. But there are so many people who are just, you know, surfing right by and don't want to hear it and don't want to listen to it. Well, that's not an excuse, my brothers and sisters, because you can't say I never heard because it was presented. And it's presented so many ways and so many times, amen, that God is doing all that he can to reach people and to help people come to the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So God is not sending anybody to hell. People go there because they choose to, because they refuse to believe or receive what God has provided in his son, our Lord Jesus. Amen. Um, it says here, where is verse 27? Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law of works? No, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. Therefore, we conclude Here's the conclusion, that a man or woman is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. Or is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also the God of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Since there is one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith, do we then make void the law through faith? Certainly not. On the contrary, we establish the law. The law was given so that we would live right, that we would do what's right. Amen? Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods. Thou shalt not do no murder. Thou shalt, you know, thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not steal. All these other things is honor God. Amen. The, the Ten Commandments have not been done away with. Uh, Christians, just because we are, we are justified by faith doesn't mean that we're not supposed to still live righteous, live holy lives, do what's right in God's sight. Well, I'm under grace, so I can do whatever I want to. No, my brothers and sisters, that's, that's the devil's mindset. That's, that's his idea. Well, I'm saved by grace, and so now I can live however I want to. No, that's not what the Word of God says. Amen. The Bible says walk circumspectly. In other words, pay very close attention to the next place you put your foot. Amen. His, his angels charge you as you dash your foot on a stone. What happens when you dash your foot on a stone? You trip. You fall. You get hurt. God doesn't want that. So pay attention to where you're walking. Pay attention to your testimony. Don't that is what you, you, you share with other people. Amen. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Our testimony, what God has done and is doing in our life, is what brings the word of God to other people in a way that they can understand it. A life transformed is a written, is an epistle, a living epistle. Amen. Is let me tell you what the Lord did for me. No phony stuff, no make-believe stuff, no hyper-spiritual things. It's real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, uh, let's continue on down. Uh, chapter 4. What then shall we say that Abraham, our father, has found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works... He has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. Amen? So Abraham, who was considered the father of faith, amen, uh, he himself 
had to fulfill this. righteousness and this we're going to get to hear the faith of abraham and it's a wonderful explanation of what faith looks like sounds like smells like amen hallelujah so verse four now to him who works the wages are not counted as grace but as debt but to him who does not work but believes on him who justifies the ungodly his faith is accounted for righteousness. So in other words, him who works, the wages are not considered grace, but a debt. So if you work, you know, 40 hours, you, you know, the paycheck you get is not grace. The paycheck you get, you earn. That comes from God, no matter how much work. Amen. Trying to make yourself right. Trying to live a good life. Trying to, to do the very best you can. It, we just don't have the ability to do it, my brothers and sisters. That's why he says, all sinned, all missed the mark. The iniquity is, is when you're shooting at a bullseye. And you hit anything but dead center bullseye is called an iniquity. And that is sin. That's what iniquity is. And so there is no way dead on bullseye every moment, every day. It cannot be done. Amen? And so God knows that, and so he offers his son. There is no hope apart from him. There is no help apart from him. And since God knows that we all sin, that we all have iniquity in our life, we fall short of the glory of God. See, bullseye dead center is the target. Not the whole target, not as close as we can get. Not yet. The, the, the very best that we can do is do, do our best. Try. Fail miserably sometimes, but sometimes... No, my brothers and sisters, when the standard is perfection, there is no other hope but to trust in the one who is perfect and the perfect gift that he has presented to you and I. And as far as God is concerned, when we accept his gift, we become perfect. Because he's perfect. So are we in the earth as he was, as he is, so are we. Hallelujah. We are righteous because he is righteous. We are holy because he is holy. We can do all things through him who strengthens us. Hallelujah. And it continues. Thank God. So anyway, let's continue a little bit further. And um, so here it said, now to him, chapter 4, verse 4, now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Just as David also describes the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness apart from works. 2 verse 1 and 2 blessed are those whose lawlessness lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered blessed is the man or woman to whom the lord shall not impute sin amen blessed is the man or woman to whom the lord shall not hold you accountable for your sin amen but forgiveness because of Jesus, not because God felt like it, even though he, that's his plan. It is his plan. It was his plan. That's what he wanted all along. But it could not be done just because of him or because that's what he wanted. It, that there had to be a propitiation. There had to be an exchange. Are you with me? And, and Jesus' blood was what was required. All of it. Aren't you glad? And so think about it, my brothers and sisters. The price that was paid for your life. So now you have a choice. Do whatever you want to do. Go your merry way or separate yourself unto God. Amen. The Bible says it's our reasonable sacrifice, our reasonable service. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is that perfect will of God. Amen. 
the perfect will of God. God has a plan for your life and he desires you to walk in it. And he's done everything that can possibly be done to enable you to do it. Amen. The blood of Jesus, the word of God, the great mighty Holy Spirit, power of eternity the name of Jesus. He's given us all that pertains to life and godliness. It belongs to you. It's all a gift, but you've got to walk in it. You've got to believe it. You've got to, you've got to acknowledge it. You've got to apply yourself to it. Hallelujah. Amen. Choose life that you and your descendants may live, the word says. So anyway, it continues on. It says a little bit more. And in verse 9, it says, Does this blessedness then come upon the circumcised only or upon the uncircumcised also? For we say that faith was accounted to Abraham for righteousness. Was it accounted while he was circumcised or uncircumcised? Not while circumcised, but while uncircumcised. So he was called righteous before he was circumcised in the flesh. You with me? Externally, that God is interested in. He, he, he called for it because he wanted a separation between those who would believe him and those who would not. And so it was a decision that every man had to make to separate himself. Amen? And still today, we all have this decision to make, men and women alike, and children. We have the decision to make. So then he goes on in verse 11, he says, And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had while still uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all those who believe, though they are uncircumcised, that righteousness might be imputed to them also. Hallelujah, that's us, my brothers and sisters. Amen? It says in verse 12, And the father of circumcision to those who not only are of the circumcision, but who also walk in the steps of the faith, which our father Abraham had while still uncircumcised. Now, I know the word of God is talking a lot about circumcision, uncircumcision. And he's talking about those that are believers, those that are Jews, and those that are not. Those that are, that are Gentiles who believe and those that are not. The, the, the separation is believing. The separation is, is believing God. Hallelujah. The word of God says in Hebrews, you know, without faith, it's impossible to, to honor God. So it's impossible to please him. Because those who come to him must believe that he is. And that is the rewarder of those who diligently. Amen. This is God's plan. This is God's will. Hallelujah. And it says here for verse 13, for the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Now, I don't have time, but you could go back and read it. God uh, appeared and spoke to Abraham and said that he would be the father of many nations. His name was Abram. His wife was Sarai, S-A-R-A-I. And God gave them a promise, said that you will be the father of many nations. Not only one, the father of one, but the father of many nations, that in you will all the nations be blessed. And the Bible says, Abraham believed God. Hallelujah. And so he instead, and God changed his name to Abraham, which, is, which for those of you that understand the, the, the name of God, all right, Jehovah, some, certain words are not supposed to be spoken, Yahweh and things like that. God took himself and put it right in the center of Abram. So it became Abraham. Amen. And he did the same thing with Sarah. It was, a, it was a circumcision of the heart, so to speak. It was separating. And, and Abram was his name, but Abraham meant father of many nations. So now it was Abraham's choice when people called him, whether he was going to acknowledge someone calling him Abram or correct them and say, I am no longer Abram, but I am Abraham. And they would immediately understand that means the father of many nations. And sure, come on, my brothers and sisters, 
Just like there will be naysayers in our lives sometimes. People would say to Abraham when he corrected them and he says, please do not call me Abram any longer, but Abraham. And they would say, you got to be kidding me. Read the story. He was an old man and Sarah was barren, beautiful woman, but barren. And God in his mercy called her Sarah, changed her name, put himself in the middle of her as well. And we're going to read about her, the miracle to the realm of the miraculous. When we believe God, we the place where God is. And that's where all things are possible. Hallelujah. Amen. Where there's nothing impossible. Amen. Hallelujah. Where resurrection, life, and healing and miracles when we believe God. Hallelujah. Just read the rest of the, read the four gospels. People came to him and were healed of everything. Why? Why? Because they believed. Mm -hmm. The woman touched the hem of his garment because she believed. And virtue flowed out of him into her and brought complete healing to her. And, and on and on and on. Why? How come? Because they believed. Glory to God. They believed in him. Mm -hmm. That he was the way. He was the truth. He was the life. He is the healer. He is the savior. Are you with me, my brothers and sisters? No difference. So here Abraham is given a choice. Is he going to believe God or is he going to just stay, you know, the way that he is? And he, it says here, and he believed God. So it goes on, it says here, for the promise, verse 13, for the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if those who are of the law, faith is made void and the promise made of no effect because the law brings about wrath. For where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are the law, but also to those who are the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Amen. Now, before I start verse 17, let me explain quickly. Remember what it said here? It says, for where there is no law, there is no. Have you ever been on a road where there is no speed limit? and you can drive for quite a while and you don't see a speed limit, um, does that mean you can do whatever you want to? No. There are laws that are set up in our nation, and when you take your driver's test, you are expected to understand the laws. That in school zones, when there's schools around, uh, it doesn't matter if there's a sign or not, 25 miles an hour. That uh, normally residential areas, 40 miles an hour, 45 miles an hour. Our speed limits are 65, unless unless otherwise posted. So uh, if you have a speed limit sign in a, in a long time, so I'm going to push it and I'm going to do 110 miles an hour, you are going to get pulled over and you're going to be given a ticket, maybe lose your license, maybe lose your vehicle. And you cannot say to the police officer, and he's not the enemy, by the way, you cannot say, I didn't see a sign. There was no speed limit. This is the law. This is the way the law is set up. And you're expected to know it. The Bible tells us, you know, and, and, and we know even our laws are set up. Ignorance is no excuse for the law. We are expected to know it. When you, when you uh, take that, that, uh, that, that certificate called a driver's license, you're expected to follow the law, follow the rules. It's not a, it's not a gift. It's, a, it's an honor. Hallelujah. Speed limits are designed. The, the, the signs where they have the yellow arrows that tell you there's a turn coming. Why are they there? For your safety and for the safety of everybody else on the road. Why do I have to, you know, abide by the law? Because that law is to protect everybody and help everybody. And so the word of God is very much the same way. It says here that um, for if the those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of no effect, because the law brings about wrath. For where there is no law, there is no transgression. Now, in another case, you may go to another country, and they have no signs, and there is, there is no speed limits then. There's no law. 
there is nothing. You go to the judge, you go and you say to them, you know, can I get a driver's license in this nation? Well, I'm going to take the test. I'm going to get the driver's license. Are there speed limits in this country? No, there are no speed limits. We, we leave it up to you. You know, use your own discretion and wisdom. That's another story. There are, are no, there, are no, there are no limits. There are no law, so there's no transgression. You can't get pulled over speeding because that particular nation, and there is no nation that exists like this, but I'm just explaining a point to you. Are you with me? Amen? The law of the Word of God is there, and it's for everybody. And, and, uh, and as I said, those who refuse to believe by faith are going to be held accountable by the law itself. We'll, we'll judge them. Amen? And, and so anyway, let's continue. Verse 17, for the little time we have left. It goes on, it says here, um, Therefore, verse 16, it is a faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. Isn't that just like God? Notice the tense. When did he say that Abraham is the father of many nations? When Abraham was old, had no children, married to a barren woman. That's faith, my brothers and sisters. That's believing God. Believing what he says above what you see, mm -hmm. what you feel what your experience is. Hallelujah. The truth, glory to God, supersedes reality. The truth supersedes everything you hear, everything you see, everything any human being declares over your life. The truth of God's word supersedes it all. All God asks is, believe me. Have faith in me. Hallelujah. Do you believe I can do it? And the answer is yes, sir. I, I, I'll share it with you as quick as I can. We'll get back to our study. Centurion, read it. Centurion came to Jesus and he said, Sir, my servant is home who I love at the point of death. Speak the word only. My servant will be healed. And I like to take a little liberty with it because I... The Bible says that Jesus marveled at his faith. He, Jesus marveled at his faith. And then he told the people around him, I haven't seen faith like this, no, not in all of Israel. So this is a, 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 an example of faith that we really should examine. We really should spend some time here and looking at it, okay? He, here's this man. He's a, he's a Roman centurion, which means he's a, he's a, he's a Roman and Italian, uh, and he's uh, over 100 men. That's a centurion. He's an officer over 100 men. And he comes to Jesus. Um, he'd heard that Jesus was, was doing miracles. He heard that Jesus had authority and, and he was able to heal the sick and raise the dead. And, and, he, and he came to his attention. So he came to Jesus on behalf of his servant who he loved. And he says, my servant lies at home at the point of death. And he says, I need you to speak the word. And, and so... Jesus said to him, this is my paraphrase, Jesus said to him, you mean, wait, 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 you mean to tell me you don't need a sign? You don't need, you don't need a proof? You don't need a, a document written from me? You, you don't need, you know, my, somebody, me to come to your house? And he, and he says to him, no, sir, all I need for you, from you is speak the word only. So Jesus said, wait, 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 you mean to tell me if I say from here, be healed, that you'll go your way in absolute confidence that your servant is healed. And the Roman centurion said, yes, sir, exactly mm -hmm. right. And I like to paraphrase again because we should camp here a while. So wait, 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 you don't need a sign. You don't need a written document. You don't need to prove. You don't, you don't need me to you know, pray for two hours. You don't need this. You don't need that. All you need me to do is say, be healed, and you'll go your way in absolute confidence that your servant is, is healed. And the centurion says, yes, sir. And that's when the Bible says Jesus marveled. And he said to those around him, I have not seen faith 
No, not all Israel. He says, because I am a man under authority. And when I say to one of the hundred men under my authority, go there, they go. When I say do this, they do it. They understand authority. And he was declaring to Jesus, I understand that bonafide. So all I need you to do is speak, is give the command, and it will be done. You are authority over Satan and all the powers of darkness, over wind and waves and all the powers of destruction, over sickness and disease and poverty and lack, and all the works of the enemy. You are authority over all of it. So just say the word. And Jesus said, be. And the Bible says that immediately, immediately that servant was at the point of death. Immediately that servant was healed. And it's one of the great examples of Without, without, you know, with faith, all things are possible. Amen? Hallelujah. And, and without faith, it's impossible to please God for those who come to him must believe that he is and that he's the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen? That man saw Jesus as all he needed would be that we would see Jesus the same way. Amen? So let's go to verse uh, 17 and uh, let's take a little bit more. 17, back to Abraham, as it is written, I have made you, past tense, I have made you. Some people may scratch their head and say, I have made you. You gotta be kidding. He's an old man. He has no children. He's married to a, bar a barren woman. And you say, I have, it's already done, as far as I'm concerned. That's the point. Because as far as God's concerned, it's already done. Mm -hmm. It to you. It doesn't have to be purchased. It was already purchased. It doesn't have to be looked for or found. It's already been presented. It belongs to you. It's in your hands. Amen? Why do you have to seek for something that's in your hands? Just use it. Just enjoy the blessing of it. Amen? And so it goes on. It says here, As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed. God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist, though they did, who contrary to hope, in hope believed, who in hope believed, so that he became so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so so shall your descendants be. Now, I can preach. I'm, I'm, I'll talk a little bit about it. We might go back and talk a little more detail because this is powerful. This is how it works, my brothers and sisters. Amen? So he says here, so shall your descendants be. Now, verse 19. And not being weak in faith, this is Abraham, and not being weak in faith. We don't want to be weak in faith. It says here, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. Did you hear that? And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body. He refused to consider his Refused. He had exalted the word of God. The promise of God higher than what he saw when he looked in a mirror. Higher than Jesus. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. Hallelujah. That's faith, my brothers and sisters. Glory to God. So it goes on. It says, he, being weak in faith, not being weak in faith. He did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old, and in his womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Rejoicing. I am no longer Abram, I am Abraham. That means father of many nations. God has called me father of many nations. That's who I am. 
Amen? And that's what I'm going to focus on. And that's what I'm going to rejoice about. And I'm not going to consider my body 100 years old dead. It's, you know, after all, it's impossible because you're 100 years old and you're married to a barren woman. You know, this is impossible. This is not. No, 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 my brothers and sisters. Those are words of doubt. Those are words of unbelief. Because the word of God says all things to those who believe. And Abraham said it. I believe it. Notice verse 21, and being fully convinced, fully convinced that what God had promised, God was fully persuaded, fully convinced, the, the New King James says, that what God had promised, God was able to perform. Verse 22, Therefore, it was accounted to him for righteousness. The best way that I can describe that is that action, amen, of not being weak in faith, not considering his, his, his present circumstances, not considering his wife's present circumstances, but being fully persuaded and totally convinced that God will do what he said, God gave him the stamp of righteousness. God says, that's righteousness. That's right behavior. That's faith that overcomes the world. That's the answer. Amen. That's what I want. And that's well-pleasing in my sight. That's called righteousness. Amen. Amen. And therefore, it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now, it was not, I love this. Now, it was, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him wasn't only, it was accounted to him for righteousness. He got the stamp of approval. In the period of time of nine months, she gave birth to a beautiful baby boy. And I told you before, Sarah was, was heavy. She was a laughing stock. The people in her own community and Abraham was was a patriarch and well-known, well-respected and well-loved. And, and people looked down their nose at, at Sarah, though she was a beautiful woman, because there's other places we read about it where it tells you what a beautiful woman she was. She was barren. And because of that, she was a laughing stock and people jeered at her and other women looked down their noses. And it was almost as if to say, you know, Abraham is such a wonderful man and he's married to that pathetic thing who can't even bear a child for him. And she had to deal with that, the scorn and, and the pain and all the rest of it. And so God in his kindness, when, when Isaac was born, his name means laughter. And, and she says later on, when, when you have a chance to read the story back in the Old Testament, it says, because God has returned laughter to my tent. God has returned laughter and rejoicing to my heart. Because it was some, she was barren physically, but she was also barren, you know, emotionally and, and, and everything else. And here now, because of God's faithfulness, she brings to, 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 to fruition uh, a child who is God's promise fulfilled. Amen? And it's, I want to read it down Hebrews chapter uh, 6, I believe. I believe it is. Is it Hebrews chapter 6? Where's Sarah? Hebrews 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. You'll see where she got the strength to conceive. Read it. Hebrews 11, 6. All right? So let's finish. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us. For also for us. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. So if you want God's stamp of approval, if you want God to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. This is what I'm looking for. This is what blesses me. This is what honors me. If you want that, this is how you get it. It was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him, who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, 
who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of chapter 5 just the beginning therefore having been justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom also we have access by faith into this very grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope the glory of God amen hallelujah and we'll pick up from here next time but I want you to know it says here it was not only written for his sake but it was written for us as well that it will be imputed to us. So all you have to do is go back and look at it, my brothers and sisters. The promises of God to you and me are yes and amen. And sometimes our circumstances are going to be opposite. And sometimes what we hear and what people think and, and how we feel is going to be opposite. But my brothers and sisters, you have to make up your mind. And being not weak in faith, he, she did not consider his, her own, own body already dead since it was about 100 years old, how far gone it is, how far along it is. You cannot consider it. Amen. You have God's promise. You have God's word on it. And the deadness of Sarah's womb, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. He did not waver. Amen. Wavering is unbelief. You cannot waver. It says, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Rehearse the promise. Meditate on the promise. Speak it out of your mouth. The promise that the word of God says, by his stripes, ye were healed. Amen. Hallelujah. And find the promises. They belong to you. If it's healing you need, find the word of God that, has, that offers healing to you. Amen. Hallelujah. And it says in verse 21, and being fully persuaded or fully convinced that what God says, God will perform. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We thank you for the opportunity together to be together. We thank you for your word. We love your word. Your word is spirit. It's life. It's our food, the bread from heaven, because it is the word of God. It is the flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, we are so grateful that we can feast on this word, that we can trust that an earth will pass. The word is eternal. Hallelujah. And you will do what you said to for, for whoever will believe it. And we are grateful and we are appreciated and we thank you for it. Now, Father, my blessing, I pray for my brothers and sisters that are watching your peace and your presence on every home and every heart. Lord, keep them, guard them, protect them, and continue, I trust, I pray, humbly but with expectation that you continue to reveal the truth to them so that they can not only receive it and, 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 and believe it, but they, they can actually walk in the light of it. And I bless each and every one of them. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, everybody. We'll see you next time. Good night.